This life-changing word was recorded live at Life Connection Church. Let's open with a word of prayer. Father God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of each one of our hearts be acceptable to you, our Lord, our Redeemer, our strength, our hope, our fortress, our help in times of trouble. Thank you, Jesus, that you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. And nothing catches you by surprise. You've chartered each one of our pilgrimage on earth. You said that the steps of a righteous man is ordained by thee. We thank you, Lord, that your plans for us are to prosper us, not to harm us, to give us a hope and a future. What a wonderful privilege to be known as your children especially in these trying days. Help us to be that beacon of light, that salt in the earth. Thank you, Lord. Anoint us with your Holy Spirit as we meditate on the characteristics of the godless days, godless characters in the last days. We pray that you would expose it to us, help us to look into ourselves, and as we learned last week, to get prepared for your coming and help us to be like those wise virgins, ready with the oil, discerning the times and helping to know that when you come and not be found sleeping. Thank you, Lord, for this church. Thank you for our church. Thank you for our pastors. Thank you for our senior pastor. Thank you for our bishop. Father, we thank you that you have appointed this church for us and for all these plans that have taken place to keep things in order, Father. Thank you for using, going, you're going to do mighty things in our midst in the coming days. We give you the praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The topic today is godless signs or marks in these last days. It doesn't need any more introduction. Everything seems to have been an introduction. Sister Sasha's exhortation, Pastor Tim's, Bishop Tim's exhortation, Pastor Allen's exhortation. All of, meaning this is an unprecedented situation that we are facing in the world. But even this, Jesus said, it's only the beginning of the birth pangs. Mr. Cliff talked about the signs of the end times two weeks back. And last week we saw that video where, it was a scary video in 45, 50 days, the kind of things that have happened or are happening. And the funny thing is that all of them are happening together, which is something new. At the same time, there's a volcano here, there's a flood there, there is, an, I thought India was safe, but last week, we went through some riots between Hindus and Muslims. It was horrible. Even now, the capital of India is burning. And things are happening. At, I mean, we don't know. Like Sasha said, within two days, from 3 to 46. We don't know today how many more. But thank God, when we look into the times, the end times, we always look, need to look into the words of Jesus. He said, in this world you will have tribulations, but be of good courage, for I have overcome the world. What a assuring statement. What a assuring encouragement that is. He said in, uh, in Revelation, John the Revelator says, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to the death. Actually, the context of this verse is that Satan has very little time left for him to do the tricks that he has up his sleeve. The same thing that he did in the Garden of Eden, he's still doing, tricking people. And yesterday in our connection group, we discuss this. Some of the times we feel that we find it very difficult to pray 
in these seasons. Like, it's as though the devil really has lulled us to sleep when God says, wake up, be alert, be on the guard, watch and pray, be devoted, be devoted to the end. And some of the things we saw last week was be a good steward of good God's resources. Be filled with the Holy Spirit and be aware of God's promises for protection and preservation. We need this in this godless world. Some of the signs that we are living in this godless world that this will be a time where there will be religion without power and also corrupt ministries. And the first thing we are going to talk about are the signs of the godless world. It says people will be lovers of themselves. But didn't Jesus say, love your neighbor as yourself? Is it a contradiction? No, we need to love ourselves. There's nothing wrong in that. We need to take care of ourselves. We need to provide for ourselves. We need to provide for our family. We need to make sure that our needs are met. So what does it mean by being lovers of themselves? It is seeking one's own desires without considering others. Like you become the center of everything. Nothing else matters. If your needs and my needs are met, that's fine. To go after what one wants, even if it's unwise, and it hurts others. To feel that everything and every, every, everyone must dance to our tunes. Actually, Jesus... When he was here, he said that. What can I compare this generation to? He said, this is a generation that plays the flute outside and wants the people to dance according to it. Meaning, that's the generation we unfortunately even now live. When we talk about end times, we are not talking about uh, that these things or these signs of volcanoes or uh, floods didn't happen those days. Only thing we see that it's all intens intensifying even more these days. To feel that, ev uh, to focus on oneself and ignore the crying and desperate needs of the desperate and dying around us. Let's look at that verse. But whoever has this world's goods, this world's goods, and sees his brother in need and shuts up his heart from him. How does the love of God abide in him? When I was preparing for this message, I did not know that the next two weeks we may not meet here. And I was meditating on the early church, how people lived as one. They had everything in common. And the Bible says that Everyone's need was met. And people saw the love of, of their fellow believers, and thousands were added to the church every day. I was a stranger, and you did not take me in. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. This loving ourselves to the extent that, you know, we become the only entity is something that comes when we are satisfied, when we, when we are self-sufficient. And the next aspect to that is that we become lovers of money. We want more, we want bigger things, we want better things, and then, of course, hoarding, and then it becomes not need anymore, it becomes greed. Some of the things we do, money, banking, houses in the best neighborhoods, possessions, travel, property, stocks, bonds, and with that, 
influence and that money comes power and we covet more and more of these things. Unfortunately, that is what the affluent society does. What is enough? Love of money is the root of all evil. Some have strayed for, uh, love of money is the root of all kinds of evil for which some have strayed from their faith in their greediness and pierced themselves with many sorrows. And a natural sequence to that is boastfulness. Or people boast on what they have and worse even, people boast on what they don't have and pretend as though they have many things. And boasting could be even in a trivial thing. I could subtly want a comment about my music system when somebody walks into my home. I can boast about a, a new position, a new job, or a deal that I have, or my perfume, a costly perfume. The world is full of politicians who, who, who think and who say that they've got the best system in this world to run their country. And if you follow them, if you vote for them, you're going to be fine. But we all know all these promises, once the elections get over, they don't happen. Teachers who pretend to be wise. By the way, teachers, congrats, another two weeks of holidays. <laughs> Nice place to be, yeah? Yeah, it's a working holiday, okay. Okay, I'm not talking about you here when it's a trick teachers be <laughs> pretending to be wise. I'm talking about, you know, even religious teachers who, who talk about, who pretend as though they have a new revelation or a, a gifts or gifts more, which are more spiritual than others. Business people who pretend to have the product that brings health, beauty and happiness. Hi, ladies. It sounds, all the advertisements, I mean, they promise great things, right? But it's all of us. <coughs> Boasting could be people who feel who need to push themselves above others, even if it involves Pretension, deception, deception, making make believe, and lies. People even go to the extent of lying as though they have something to show that show others that they are better than others. And pride. People exalt themselves, get arrogant, haughty. All we need to do is to look at people who have power around us, people who have control in our organizations. And we can really see that these characters are rampant in the world today. See the atrocities that are committed on the weak in different parts of the world. It's either my way or the highway. If you don't align, with them, you are asked to be in a different circle. But when they do the same thing, they seem to say that they have the right to do the things. That's pride. And pride can be subtle. You know, if we feel that we are better than the other person, that can also be pride. We may appear quiet and humble, but within our heart, secretly, we may think that we can do better than the other person, or we don't need to depend on the other person, and we don't need the other person, and also we don't need God. Pride goes before destruction, and a haughty spirit will fall. Abusive. Why is there so much cursing in the world today? I'm sure you come across that with your colleagues every day. People curse the boss, people call, curse the colleagues, people curse the system. P 
people rail and revile insult when they are disturbed within themselves, dissatisfied, unaccepted, empty, and lonely. A disturbed and dissatisfied heart causes people to verbally abuse or blaspheme God and man, including themselves, bringing up a curse upon themselves. Disobedience to parents. I thank God for godly children. Thank God for good children, obedient children. But very often we come across stories of a disobedient child, a wayward child, a family going through lots of situations because of that. I remember a story of a girl I'm not sure whether this is a true story, but I've read it somewhere, where it said that this girl was drunk and was going for a party with her friends in a car. The car was already overcrowded, and the mother said, please, don't go. But she said, I, I want to go. And she jumped into the car. And the mother said, please take Jesus with you. Please take God with you. She pleaded with the child, and this, is, this was her reaction. She said, if God wants to come, he has the boot. That's what she said. And the story goes that they had, a, they had a crash, and everyone died. And when they opened the boot, they found a crate of eggs, perfectly perfect, without breaking. God is a real entity and God is here. God responds to our prayers. That's why we can be bold today. That's why we can be happy today in spite of all these things. In fact, we, are, we may be the only church who are meeting today. Every other church has been shut down, closed down by the authorities as well as the church elders. For God commanded saying, honor your father and mother and he who curses father or mother let him be put to death. Listen to your father who begot you, and do not despise your mother when she is old. There's a nice cartoon I've seen of two brothers pulling their mother's hand when they are young. It's my mom, my mom. But when the mother's really old, both the sons are pushing. It's your mom, it's your mom. It's so sad. That's, that's the reality of the world that we are living in. Ungrateful. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God. Nor were they thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. In Romans 1, we see the degradation of man instead of Worshipping the creator, he started worshipping created beings. And God allowed a depravity into the minds of men. Giving thanks to, God, to the Father who has qualified us to be. We need to be thankful for every little thing. We need to be thankful that we could come today to church. We need to be thankful that we are breathing still. We need to be thankful for our church. We thank you, thankful for our pastors, for our brothers and sisters, our spouse, our children, our children to come, our jobs, and our health. And I'm so grateful for my hair on my head. <laughs> you know, when, uh, when I was in college, well, you may say you hardly have anything, but I'm still grateful because when I was in college, when I look into the mirror, meaning I used to oil my hair and comb it really. When my friends were all using shampoos and, you know, they were fluffing up their hair. And they said, even before you get married, you will have no hair. <laughs> Sorry, Cliff. Okay. <laughs> but now I ask these guys, please send me your photograph. And none of them sends me their photographs. And if they, on their Facebook profiles, there are pictures with caps on, you know, fancy hats on. 
Praise God. When I look at this hair, I say, thank you, Lord. <laughs> when I look at my wife, I say, thank you, Lord. She's the first girl who liked me. <laughs> I'm so grateful for that. And if it had been my choice, I don't know where I would have landed up. Thank God that God kept her for me. I'm so grateful that she came into my life. And I cannot think of a better marriage, a better gift from God. We need to be thankful for everything. I like Sinatra was playing Give Thanks with a Grateful Heart during the offering. I think we should sing that towards the end. Let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich. We are the salt of the earth. God has chosen us, equipped us, anointed us, seated us in heavenly places for such a time as this when no weapon formed against you and me will prosper. I was just thinking, what if they tell me tomorrow I have to go and treat a patient with coronavirus? Will I shy away? Will I take leave? <laughs> or will I do what they are doing in China? Have you seen that video of medical workers 20, I mean, eight hours shifts, 15 hour shifts, working night and day, wearing pampers. Because they don't have time, because the, those suits are so protected that you can't take it out every time. God is good. He knows our future. He's ordained every step of a righteous man is ordained by God. Unholy. If you cannot live without something for 24 hours, it's an addiction. I'm guilty of coffee. <laughs> Sister Colleen, <laughs> she, she sent me a note because I ordered some coffee pots through her. I said, shouldn't drink too much coffee. <laughs> I said, it's for the guests, not for me. But I, but I know I am guilty. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> constant gratification of the flesh. Constant gratification of the sinful nature. It's mastered by passion. Lit, it senses little shame. It's blind to decency. It seeks pleasure in the abnormal. I have an interesting colleague. He said, if God wanted you to love one woman, he would have created a heart with only one chamber. Why did he create four chambers? You know the society we live in. There are three institutions that are under the greatest attack. One is home, marriage, and a mind maybe even for the church. Church is a gathering of happy families. I saw some of your faces in the family day. I'm sure you enjoyed it. Unfortunately, I was on call. I could not go there. But we as sanctified, blood-washed children of God must continue to renew our mind according to the word of God and be able to control our desires and focus on the greater calling upon our lives. But when we become lovers of ourselves, lovers of money, we become boastful and proud, very often in a subtle way, slowly becoming ungrateful and unloving in our hearts and breaking the trust God has in us to love our neighbor as ourselves. You know, I have an interesting friend um, who says Jesus has not done anything for me in the last three years. He says, I have taken water baptism, I have followed Christ, but he has not done anything for me. So I asked, what do you want? 
And he said, I want 20,000 KD right now. And after six months, I may need another 40,000 KD. So now I just told him, see, God is not jackpot like a lucky dip. You, there are ways to follow him. You need to follow him in truth. You don't come to God for finances. You come to God because you love him, because he died for you, purchased your salvation. But that is his need. That is his need. He says, no, I want God to provide these things for me. Well, I don't know how the early church would have reacted to a situation like this when they lived together as a community. And it says that there was no poor man in the church. And it also says they met the need of everybody. Interesting times. We are being called to become home churches for a while. Cruise, break, cruise breakers. What happens when a parent or a child keep breaking the promise with each other? What happens in the home when the husband and wife break the truce of marriage? What happens when workers break their truce and slack in their work? What happens when an employer breaks his promise to his workers? So all these things, you know, we live in a world where, you know, any, things change every day, every second. And there are no people following morals. Even lawyers are being employ, uh, employed by the, the ruling party of the government. And if you're not a, with them, they will just transfer you to another place. Even the Supreme Court judges are being changed. Second Timothy 3, 2 to 5 says, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such men turn away. It's a true depiction of the world today. And also a true depiction of godless ministries. Little affection for the normal and natural. No affection at home for friends, country or the earth, for God and the church. But thank God, God has given us this wonderful church, the vision, fulfillment of the great com commandment by loving God and others, and the fulfillment of the great commission through the multiplication of saints. And like Apostle Paul, we can say that we are not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God unto salvation who believes. Jesus said, whoever commits a sin is a slave to sin. Slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son, of, son sets you free, you shall be Freed and free indeed. That's the power of God unto salvation, the, the miracle working power of God. Some of the miracles that God has done in our lives, if it had been done, and the Bible says that Tyre and Sidon would have repented with sackcloth and ashes. Yeah? But, but thank God, God is a patient God. God is a, the most patient person. When I look at my life and the things that I've gone through, I'm just amazed at his love. How many times he has allowed me to rise up. And I believe he has kept me for such a time as this. Just like each one of you must be believing in your heart. What is true ministry? James said to be un true religion is to be undefiled from the world and to take care of orphans and widows. Also, we read these verses earlier. I was a stranger, and you did not take me in. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. But whoever has this world's goods 
and sees his brother in need and shuts up his heart from him. How does the love of God abide in him? Even as we wrap up this message, I would ask uh, Sinatra, if you can come and play, give thanks with a grateful heart with the permission of Brother Henry and Sister Marianne. And this is not a time for despondency. This is not a time for fear. This is not a time to be despondent. This is a, this is a time when every day we need to wake up saying, Put your trust in the Lord. Why are you downcast, O oh my soul? Put your trust in God. Raise a hallelujah in our situations. And be able to walk in the fullness of God, in the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Love God with all our heart and to proclaim the gospel. And also in, in the coming weeks in our house groups, if you're not part of a connection group. I'm sure uh, Minister Cliff will be giving you some instructions. Already sheets are being passed out. Please make sure we'll connect you. And we need you. Connection groups, we need you. And you need to stay in touch with the small group. And you'll enjoy the love and the vision of the church. So let's stand. Let's stand. But mark these, these will be terrible times and the, there will be terrible times in the last days. But we thank God for the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the intercession of the Holy Spirit for each one of us. Thanks for listening. For more information or recordings, visit us online at lifeconnectionchurchkw.com.